everybody so I am back doing another video this one is actually just going to be more of like an acrylics basics video I accidentally ripped off one of my nails um, so I was super sad about it and it was actually a pretty bad break I actually ripped off like my hypernicium on my pointer finger so what I'm gonna do is show you guys how I fix it this is how it looks five days after the accident so I had just put some neosporin on it and kind of bandaged it and allowed it to kind of dry up and heal a little bit before going in and applying another enhancement. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to file down the original acrylic so that I can see what we're working with. So the damage to my natural nail was actually mostly along the tip of the nail. So what I'm going to do is just file down that back end, make sure that there's no lifting or anything from me breaking it. Um, and if there is, just take off that lifting. So I left in most of the filing here so that you guys can see what I do. I do kind of lower the speed so I start off pretty high um, sometimes when I'm taking down bulk I'll go up to like 20 to 25 rpms and then I drop it down as I get closer to the natural nail just so that I'm being a little bit more careful and making sure I don't accidentally damage that natural nail so I'm going around and just looking at any areas that need to be debulked and or removing any areas of lifting and I'm being very careful not to snag any broken parts of my natural nail um, with the e-file as well right here I'm just pointing out where I was noticing I had some lifting um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take off those little areas um, and you again just want to be as careful as possible um, if you do have a break and you're trying to do this give your nail just a couple days to heal because um, at first it's gonna be super sore and sensitive and you want to just make sure that it's healing okay before you go ahead and cover it so what I'm doing here is just being very careful and and just going around um, all the damage that I see to the tip of my nail. Once you've done that, if you have any areas of your nail um, that are like broken um, or cracked and you are able to cut them down, um, do that now. I'm going ahead and cutting down my nail as far down as I can get it. I actually was able to get off a good portion of it since my hypernicium ripped off because I was able to basically take off any overhang. Um, so I do that to just prevent any additional damage um, and really just bring it as close down to the undamaged portion of the nail as possible. Once I did that, I'm going in with a fine grit sanding band. This one's by Profiles Backstage. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and prep the nail. Um, I'm being very careful, especially when I'm going over the area that's like damaged or cracked. Because again, you don't want to snag it on the e-file. Um, one tip too is when you break a nail, sometimes the layers of your nail kind of lift up. So just be careful and go over those areas because you want to take off any lifted layers of nail so that when you apply the acrylic, it adheres really well. So once I'm done with all of that, I'm going to go in with some um, rubbing alcohol just as a dehydrator. I'm using it on a lint-free pad just so that I could be a little more precise because I don't want to get this in any of the wound area. And then I'm going to go in and prime my nail. So this one is the Young Nails Protein Bond. I'm going to go ahead and apply that as my first primer. Um, but since I have a little crack at the tip of my nail, I want there to be something to help just kind of adhere that and keep it a little bit more protected. Um, obviously the acrylic will do that, but I'm going to go ahead and do a step further and apply my nail prof 
um, rubber base coat and this is just going to give me a layer of just protection over my natural nail and it's going to kind of seal that crack before I even go in with acrylic. So I'm gonna apply a thin layer of this and then go ahead and cure it before I go in with my acrylic. Now I applied my form as normal. Um, now that my nail is healed, I didn't need to do anything fancy with it. So I went ahead and did that. And now I'm going in with the Young Nail Speed, Speed Clear Acrylic and I am just applying that to my natural nail. So I am creating my free edge and I'm using the clear because I want to be able to see the natural nail as much as possible even after the enhancement is done so that I can kind of monitor how it's healing and how it's looking at all stages um, just in case. I personally like to do this so that I make sure that there are no issues with the healing process um, but obviously I like to put on an enhancement once it's healed a little bit just to protect the area and also um, it's very sensitive so this gives me a little bit of a buffer to the tip of my nail so I'm not like kind of hitting it on things as I go about my day so I'm just going to apply this like normal once I'm done with the free edge I go in with my cuticle bead and then I just fill in like my apex and add any bulk that's needed you don't need to go too crazy um, filling in your apex on a short nail um, but I do want to make sure my structure is sound obviously because this is already a broken nail so um, just so that you're aware, the monomer I'm using is the not polish uh, acrylic monomer and the brush I'm using is the size 12 from Valentino. Once all that is done, I'm going to go ahead and file the snail. I'm using a 150-150 grit file from Nail Supply Glamour. I'm going to go ahead and clean up the edges and just file over the surface. There really shouldn't be too much filing for this um, because it is a short nail and I try to keep my application as clean as possible. You do want to try to minimize the amount that you're filing the nail because uh, filing does add pressure to the nail plate um, and again your nail is probably sore and you don't want to add more pressure um, or cause more stress than you absolutely have to. So I'm just going in and filing this. I'm just using a pretty soft grit, medium grit file um, and going ahead just to clean up the shape as much as possible. So I use the hand file pretty much for majority of my filing and then I'm going to go in after this um, and you'll see I go in with a medium grit. It's also a 150 grit sanding band and I'm going to go ahead and just file down the cuticle area to make sure that it's flush. So I try to get the bulk with the hand file and then just do any little touch-ups with the sanding band just to kind of smooth out the surface. Now I'm going in with that sanding band like I said. Um, I'm doing this at a speed of about 4,000 RPMs. Um, this is really, like I said, just to do some final touches, smooth around that cuticle, and just smooth over the top layer of acrylic, make sure that everything is kind of seamless and blended together. Now I'm going to go in with a jelly polish. This one is by Beatles. It doesn't have a name, um, but it's just a pink jelly polish. I'm going in with a jelly because, again, I want to be able to see as much of my natural nail as possible even once this is done. So I'm going to go ahead and apply two layers of this on top of the enhancement. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to add a little bit of a design. 
I'm going in with some white gel paint and I'm just creating kind of like a stripe design, um, like abstract design all over the nail using a little liner brush that I got, I think, from Amazon. Um, I'm doing this because I don't love the way the jellies look by themselves. And this is kind of like a peekaboo design, so I can still see through it. Um, it doesn't cover the entire nail. Um, but it still gives me a little something and a little coverage so that it's not just the jelly and you can't see the little damaged part of my nail through the gel polish. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. You really just do lines wherever it feels comfortable and just kind of go with the flow of your nail and the nail shape. Um, so that's pretty much all I'm doing here. Nothing too fancy. I'm just kind of throwing on this design pretty quick and simple. Once I'm done with that, I'm using the matte top coat from Beatles as well. I prefer matte top coats when I do jellies. I just feel like it gives it almost a stained glass look. And once that's on, that is pretty much the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and got to learn something on how I fix um, my broken nails when they do happen. Obviously, try to make sure your structures are pretty good um, so that this doesn't happen. Also, I did keep the pointer finger just a little shorter than the rest um, just to keep as little stress as possible to that nail plate. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like this video if you did. Comment below what else you would like to see from me and subscribe to this channel to see more in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you are. Alrighty guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.